Yeah, so basically, I just had my shower. I'm ready to go out. I'm going to Sway Ball for Vanguard interview. And that's what's up, basically. Me and my homie Sneaker Boy, we're gonna roll, you know what I mean? Like elastic, she bend the band so fantastic. She join the gymnastic girl. Look at the one that's so drastic. Anyone you go, you lock it down like a lock. She can do the 24 up, six up and down the 24 top six. We got a dandy, girl. We're going to be there. Love like all them take away me, visa. I love it when you wind up for me, bitch. Why your body, baby? Why your body, babe? Like you want the other baby? Why to me, why to me? Move up the waist, lie to me, lie to me. And when you wind, wait in a time for me. If I'm on it, come spend mine to me. Are you a fee? Um, my real name is Panshak Zamani. That is Panshak Zamani, spelled P-A-N-S-H-A-K. Zamani is Z A M A N I. I'm from Jos. I grew up. I grew up in Plateau State. I'm from Plateau State, but I grew up in Jos. You know, and growing up for me was fun. I loved every bit of it. Um, I grew up around a lot of missionaries, and yeah, a lot of white missionaries, like missionaries, gospel mis missionaries. Yeah, and yeah, it was fun growing up in Jos. Back then, Jos was very peaceful. It wasn't. There was no unrest. There was no chaos. It was just very peaceful and. I loved every bit of it. I had a positive upbringing. You know, my parents brought me up well. I used to, my parents used to drop me. I'm the kind of child that my my parents will drop me every Sunday in the morning in Sunday school, and then they go to the main church, and and they took me. They took me to school as well, and we used to have night devotions at home. That, that's the kind of training that my parents, you know, gave me. They didn't let me watch anything that was when I was under 18. I couldn't watch anything that had PG on it. Uh, so I used to watch Cartoon Network when I was a child. So I mean, I mean, I was brought up like normal, like every normal child was brought up in a positive way. How come you, you know, just jumped into music like that? You didn't even do gospel. Just went straight into. What I always say is that my my music is my gospel. You know what I mean? I I believe that um, going deep into gospel music, if you're not called by God, trust me, I don't think it is right for you to open your mouth. Even if you're a pastor, if you're not called by God, I don't think it's it's okay for you to carry the microphone and see you're singing about God. You know what I mean? I think it's a calling. But for me, my music is my gospel. I try to, I, I'm, I'm trying to preach, you know, um, positivity in my music. I'm, try, I'm trying to preach that. I'm trying to inspire somebody with my music, and that's my gospel. God was gospel. Gospel is, good, gospel is good news, and that's what my music brings. My music brings the story of a boy that came from Joss, and then he, he, I mean, he made it in, in Lagos without even knowing anybody. And that's what I'm preaching to the rest of the other youths in other parts of Lagos, you know, that. that probably don't believe in themselves. That's my gospel. How was it like for you? What gave you the confidence to come to Lagos without knowing anybody and then you thought you were going to succeed and here you are today with your first CD, your CD, your The major, The major motivation for me behind my success is, behind my push to come to Lagos, is MI, really, you know what I mean? Because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know anywhere in Lagos before then, you know what I mean? I was just living in Joss and Abuja. You know, what MI told us, he said, yo man, we, we had to go to Lagos to, to, to make our music big, to push our music. And we just followed him, you know, we came. You know, it's just that, the, 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 the power to fight the fear of the unknown. You know what I mean? Like, the first few times, first few weeks or first few months when I was in Lagos, I know I remember I was sleeping on the carpet. Like, I was, I didn't have a place to stay. I was basically, there. I was living with Jeannie at the time. You know, Jeannie, the, the singer. And I was, I was lying down on Jeannie's carpet in his living room, just, you know, squatting with him. Yeah, I mean, I think it was just a fight. It was just a, to fight, it was just fighting the fear of the unknown. I didn't know what I was going to see. I didn't know what to expect. 
I didn't know if anybody, I, I didn't even know if I was going to blow. I just made up my mind that I wanted to do it. It's just the passion, it's the love for my for my skill, and I pursue, I followed it, and then the rest is the story, like they say. Are you okay with the money you get from the no yeah, you see, the thing about Chocolate City is that what we have goes beyond business. You know what I mean? We're more of a family. You know what I mean? Emma and Jesse are blood brothers. I am also sort of like a blood brother to them. You know what I mean? Even though we have different parents, but their parents are my parents. Their parents basically adopted me. You know what I mean? Since my, my both parents died. Their parents adopted me. So their parents are my parents as well. So we go beyond business and contracts and stuff. We all we exist as a family. So even if we have issues, we sort it out in-house. You if, if you check it out, yeah, it's only chocolate city that you never hear any stories outside. You never find a paper and say, Emma and Jesse fighting, Emma and Ice Prince. You never see those things in papers. You never hear the stories about us because we are a family. We're not friends. We're family. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then, um, Chocolate City has probably the best contract that I've seen in Nigeria based on my own perspective because I've seen other record labels contracts I mean other record, record labels have approached me with their own contracts and I've read it and I've read Chocolate City's own and Chocolate City has probably the most fair probably the most fair contract in the whole of this country you know what I mean the percentages split is how it is done anywhere in the world and I'm very okay with that you know what I mean when the show comes in they take their percentage I take my percentage the management takes their cost when an endorsement or an um, um, franchise comes in, they, with this, the percentage, percentage split is almost the same with any other contract in the world. And I'm very, very okay with that. <laughs> Why would you see that? How do I cope with girls? I just try to be nice with every girl that, that, that comes near me. What one philosophy I have in life, and this is something that my mom always taught me, is treat a woman how you would want somebody else to treat your sister. You know what I mean? And for me, I don't have a brother, I only have sisters. So sisters mean a lot to me. Women mean a lot to me, you know. I mean, I grew up, I grew up around women, so I know how to tr to treat women. I know how to handle women. I'm not a flirt. I know my family background. I know where I'm coming from. You know, I know that um, if I do this thing, my parents will be too happy about it. I try to stay away from it. You know, what I mean. So even though they're dead, they're both not alive anymore. But I know what they would have wanted me to do if they were alive. So I try to stick to those policies and stick to those rules. Yeah. Yeah. I have. I, I have faced a lot of those moments, but I don't call them embarrassing. Like recently, I was in. I was in the UK. I was in London. I was performing in um, the Hammersmith Apollo, and you know, I could just see when we're doing the sound check, when we're doing the rehearsal. It was me, Whiskey, and P Square, you know, in in London. And when we're doing the sound check, like girls came, you know, what I mean, and these girls were they were not looking like normal, you know, what I mean, they're. A lot of the stuff of the show we're showing, you know what I mean? And they okay, yeah, blah blah blah, we wanna follow you to your hotel, we wanna follow you to the after party, and this and that and this and that and this and that. But I mean, at the end of the day I know myself. You know, recently also I was in Abraka and they took me to the girls' hostel. I just say hi, I just be nice. Just like I'm talking to you, I just talk to girl, I just talk to them, just like I'm talking to you at the end of the day. I have a girlfriend by the way, so I I I am faithful to my relationship. I don't go I don't do stuff outside of my relationship. Yeah. Hopefully, if that's what God has planned for my life, then fine, I will do so. But because I have a girlfriend, and the reason why I have a girlfriend is so that I don't do other stuff with women, you know what I mean? So that I don't look randy. Does she go with shoes? Nah, she's not, I don't put her out there. Um, if I'm to rewind time and fix something, I'll probably release my album before my mom died. Yeah. Let's not go back to that again, please. I just would have released my album before she died. Yeah.